Hello, hello. God bless you. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes, yes. I was going through some things. Still going through some things. But. I can't pat myself on. Well, let me stop. God bless you. God keep you. I pray that your life be full of peace. But when the disturbance comes in your life, I pray that you go to the master. Jesus Christ, who can answer your prayers. Amen. Uh, yeah, I said I, 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 I left on like a bad note, but I was going through something, you know. I, I'm going through it, you know. I, I, you just got to keep going through. But the thing was, when I was talking to you last... You know, like I'm just gonna talk. I'm I'm tired. I, I can I'm not gonna keep trying to explain everything, but I'm just gonna say where I'm at. Uh, <clears throat> then I gotta get out of here. Um, you open your mouth, and I open my mouth, and I ask for help. Talking about what I'm going through, I needed encouragement, somebody to encourage me. And um, uh, so I know that closed mouths don't get fed. So I went out. Well, I mean, I'm talking to people and everything. Couldn't really find too many. Well, I, let me take it back. Some people gave me some answers, but they wasn't. Uh, it was something for them. It was some control things for them. It wasn't to benefit me. It was to benefit them. You know how people talk about they want to help you, but really they want to help themselves. So... And I'm not talking about spiritual. I'm talking about they own selfish game. Uh, anyway, so I'm talking to people and I'm talking, you know, about what I'm doing, what I want to do, what direction I want to go in. Uh, I met some interest. I had been praying. I walked through the park in the rain and I had prayed. And God sent two people in my path, you know. And uh, so I talked to one. You know, that's deep into social acti activism and everything. So it was cool. Gave me some information. So then I talked to this other person that I felt that could encourage me. You know, build up my spirit. Give me a little direction. You know what I'm saying? Some constructive criticism. Man, please. He got to talking to me and, and it was like... <laughs> mm. It didn't work. And I'm saying that to say, it's nothing wrong. I always ask for help. But be careful about where your help comes from. And be careful about the advice that you are given. Basically what this person that I thought that was going to encourage me, what he ended up saying was that I'm angry about something. Hello. I need to look at some things. I need to change some things. I need to get rid of some things. Hello. We already been doing that. You know what I'm saying? I've been doing that. I've been telling you about it. I've already been doing that. I got rid of the internet. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I knew that that was something to help with my bills and stuff. So I've been doing that. I've been working two jobs. Here's the hit that gets me. This is what was the icing on the cake. Dig this. I'm talking to him, right? So he going to tell me also when I, t I told him I went to the work to the second job, really, which is my first job. So I'm on the first job. I go there. I'm dressed. My little outfit. So I get there. They're going to tell me basically. Is that I'm on a five day suspension. Because I didn't call in. But I called in and told them. That I had to work the first job on Sunday. But you're going to tell me I didn't call. But I called and spoke to somebody. Because they basically didn't write down the information. And you're too lazy to go back and look at the call or ID. You're going to stand there and tell me. That I have to, uh, I could take a five day suspension. I could go to the dude Ross, which I got into it with. They tried to tell me that he had authority to send me home because I asked him what, uh, what day I get paid. Okay, for real? I'm gonna go back to him? No, I'm not. Give me the five day suspension. Then I prayed about it. 
I got home and I thought about it a little deeply and I called back, take me off the call list. Don't call me. Don't contact me. I quit. My point is this. When I'm talking to the dude that I'm trying to get encouragement from, which he's a person that I had, I, I liked him and I admired him and I have respected him. Not saying that I totally don't now, but you know what I'm saying? He always, he had given me some advice some years ago and it helped me because he seen things from a different perspective than I did. And he helped me and he helped this other lady I was with. So, but this is the hit. He gonna tell me, you gonna let them mess with your money? You need money, right? It's about your money. You should have got your money. You gonna put that first? So, you know, today I listen. I listen. I took it in. I said, but you don't, he's like, nah, you know, he gonna get his point across. I'm gonna, I, I, you know, I, I gotta shut up because I asked for advice, so I'm taking it. So, all right. So, I get home, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm meditating on it. I'm praying on it. And you know what? It took today to really get it. I'm uncomfortable with that. I'm uncomfortable with it. I'm not gonna accept that. You know, yeah, I need to get more people around me. I need to talk to a lot of people. But what is the purpose of talking to a whole lot of people if they're not on your level? There's a song out about your boy. I can't think of his name. Get on my level. Everybody is not on your level. Get with somebody on your level. That means get to somebody that's going where you're going or talking about what you're talking about. But for you to tell me that I got to kiss somebody's butt, which the job pays $8 an hour, you don't even have a lot of work. You have people thinking they're going to work, and then you turn around and call a person and cancel. You underbid it a whole real good company to get the contract for real, for real. Anyway, you want me to kiss the dude's butt? I already knew that. I got the spirit of discernment. I took a class. So I tell them, go to Bates. Go take your master life class so you can find out your spiritual gifts. And, and you learn. You pray about it and ask God for the uh, spirit of discernment discernment and I discerned I already knew what they was trying to do the dude to try to tell me to go home he was already here conspired with the other dude to try to see our man go over there and say something to her tell her she got to come to me in order to get her job back but the big boss is sitting there and he's a black man he owns the company but you gonna try to tell me that I gotta go through this dude to get my to, to decide if I'm gonna work for for and not take the suspension for that day and I already got there and I'm already dressed and you already consumed my time. I borrowed a shirt to save money and you're going to come to me when you could have been decent rather than being hateful and angry. You could have called me and told me to begin with that I was on a suspension. Instead, you wait till I got dressed and came in there. Hmm. Evil. That's what I'm talking about. Nasty. No good people. Anyway, like I said, so... Do gonna tell me, my mentor, I thought, telling me basically it's about the money. You gonna let people interrupt your money? Yeah, you should have basically just went on and uh, uh asked. Here's my thing. No, I shouldn't. And I'm gonna tell you why. Because I prayed about it. And here's the hit. Same thing with the other job when I was working and the dude was doing the sexual uh the sexual harassment. You got to feel on me every time you pass me. You got to get all up in my face when you talking to me. You constantly intimidate me and threatening me. You constantly threatening me. You know I could take your job. That's intimidation. That's harassment. Hello. I didn't take that. Yeah, I suffered behind it. Yeah, my money, my bills and everything got behind. But I stood for something that I believed in. Because I knew if I still kiss your butt, you would have tried to continue to manipulate me. And I'm not going to be manipulated and had like that. Here's the hit. As I was praying this morning, which I've been up since four, meditating and thinking, which I thank God I feel better because I caught a cold from a chick and turned around and ran into her late on uh, the other day. But anyway, thank God he healed me. I feel better. I took some medication and stuff, but I feel much better. Anyway, here's what I prayed and meditated on and God gave me an answer. When, uh, what my mentor was basically saying to me is, I'm in trouble because of me. I'm suffering and I'm, I'm to blame for the situation I'm in. I'm responsible for some of my bills being late. I'm responsible for losing things. It's my fault, right? 
So I'm like, okay, I feel that. So I'm, you know, I'm kicking myself for a minute. So like I said, I start praying and then I remember something. I didn't remember nothing. Let me take that light back. God placed it on my mind. That's why he said, get in the word and know the word for yourself. And if I don't, if I'm not reading the Bible, I get the word from a church, somebody's church, somebody spiritually fit. Anyway, God brought to my remembrance, Joseph. What did Joseph do wrong to get thrown in the pit? <clears throat> what did Joseph do wrong? <clears throat> Last of that cold coming out. What did Joseph do wrong to get thrown into the pit? When his brothers got together and they threw him in the pit. What did he do wrong? I'll wait. What did he do wrong for his brothers to throw him into the pit and then they end up getting sold into slavery? All he did was told them, he told his brothers his dream. Okay, yeah, he was wrong. He didn't know it. He didn't know they were how selfish and jealous they was. But he got thrown in there and he got sold. Okay, so how was he wrong in it? I, I, okay, you want to say, yeah, he shouldn't have told people his dream, so therefore that's why he got punished. Okay, we'll deal with that one. Really, when it, is, when it boils down to it, the man didn't do nothing wrong. But that was his path that God wanted him to take. And that was the evil doing of his, his brothers, his family. Also, this is how awesome my God is. That's why I love him. That's why I can't turn my back on him. No matter how I get slayed. And no matter what I go through. I'm a whine and cry about it sometimes. And kick my feet and stomp. But at the same time, I know he loved me. And I remember how far he brought me. And like I said, I had to go into deep prayer because I looked for people and I couldn't find no people that I could talk to and they wasn't feeding me nothing. So I went straight to him and I talked to him. I walked with him and I talked with him. And he held me and he kept me strong. I didn't take a drink. I didn't mess up a part of my dream. He held me and he rocked me. Yeah, just to be kept by the Lord. So anyway, so then God came back at me and he said, what did Joseph do wrong when the king's wife was trying to be with him? She's trying to uh, mess with him, right? Remember? She tried to grab him. And what did Joseph do? He ran. I'm not always, I am, I'm not going to bite my tongue. I'm comparing my life to his life because the Bible is real. He said, look in the word. If my word don't change, that's real. Look, I'm in the same situation. Dude tried to sexually harass me. What happened? I walked away from him. Yeah, I got punished. Joseph walked away from the wife because she was trying to be with him and she was a married woman. He didn't want to do that. So he walked away. What happened? He got thrown in, he got thrown in the dungeon for doing what he believed was correct. And that's the same thing with me. I'm doing what I believe is correct. You might be doing what you believe is correct. Don't think because you're doing what, what's correct and what you believe in is not going to get you some type of dis, 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 depression. Some type of uh, uncomfort, uncomfortableness. Don't think it's going to always be peace when you're trying to do wrong. And that's the thing. Everybody wants, wants to sugarcoat things to people. Especially to black, black people. You know, and what, it, what, like I said, I'm trying not to cuss. I'm trying to get there where I don't cuss right now but anyway it irks me when I'm talking to somebody and I'm asking I'm talking with someone and they want me to always bow down because it was me and him having a conversation and I'm supposed to kiss dude's butt let's just cut it short I'm supposed to kiss his butt and suck up to him for the job same thing with Joseph. Joseph would. Joseph could have went on. Okay, let, let's look at a different scenario. What if Joseph would have turned around when she was trying to make advances at him? And he turned around and he said, oh, come on, bring it on. You know what I'm saying? Let's do it. Don't y'all think about when he did get to the point when he didn't want to be with her anymore, or she decided that she wanted somebody else, another boy toy, don't you think she would have ended up killing him or throwing him in the dungeon? I telling her husband that he made an advancement to her just like she did then. That's what's wrong. Black people always sitting back thinking that, oh, I'm going to do the best thing. Let me get out here and do it. We don't have to bow down to nobody. We can look the world in the eye. 
We're not back in slavery time. You can look the white man in the eye, the brown man, the blue man, the alien. You can look everybody in the eye. You don't have to look down at the at the ground when you're passing people. We can look the world in the eye. Who told you that you have to be ashamed of who you are? Who told you that you can't stand up for yourself? Who told you that you have to bow down in the order to get down? Who told you that you cannot ever achieve anything unless you play the game this way? Or you play the game that way? The devil is a lie. He's a liar. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Anybody that tells you that you can't be anything that you want to be, that you're a dreamer, and you're going to lose, and you never can accomplish anything, your skin color's holding you back, your police record's holding you back, your neighborhood's holding you back, they a lie. Stop listening to that. I get angry because it's like, you know, it's not like, like I said, dude said it. And I'm thinking like, okay, I thought you was, I thought you was really on something. But now, you know what I'm saying? I'm backing off. You know, I'm backing off another person too. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I got the gift of goodbye. <laughs> if you hurting me, nah, I'm not going to sit there. And I understand now <clears throat> in my journey of life, when God says protect your heart, he's not saying that just to be saying that he means that. Protect your heart. You don't throw your heart out here to anybody and to anything. You don't get deep in, in, involved in a lot of things. Because it can pull you away from God. Because you start thinking with your heart. And you need to rely on the spirit. The spirit of discernment. The Holy Spirit to lead and guide you. The people that you think are for you quite often are not for you. They're against you, but you got to pray so you'll see it. So like I said, uh, God put my butt too. What got me too, like I said, I don't know your walk with God, but when I'm walking and talking with God and I start praying, he start revealing stuff to me. And he revealed to me anyway. He said, I didn't even tell you to go back. And I'm learning him. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I, I, I have to... Uh, I have to admit to myself that I get comfortable. Don't ever get comfortable with Jesus. Don't ever get comfortable with God. I get comfortable when I think, oh, okay. For some reason, I think I, I, I think I know him. And I don't. I don't know him. Because I thought, okay, he want me to get out here and get this. I got to get this money. And so I went back to the job. And I shouldn't have went back because he let me know. I'm learning that when there's some discomfort, when there's some confusion, which I read in the Bible and when he was talking about people take things out of context. I thought when, the, and I listened to, that's why it's not good to listen to people. Get, get around a man or God. Get around somebody that knows that Bible that gets into that Bible get, and, and live the Bible. I'm not saying they perfect, but get around somebody that can, can explain the Bible to you. Not just tell you what their own interpretation is, but explain the Bible to you. And anyway, this morning when I was looking, I read up. I was asking about confusion. And in there, it was given the scripture. I can't recall the exact one, but it was talking about when uh, uh, the Bible verse about um, no confusion. It meant no confusion in the church. He didn't mean just confusion if a job is no peace and everything. All right, he wants no confusion in the church. All that uh, uh, organ, no organ and stuff, he was pertaining to the church. But you get around the wrong people, they want to tell you, oh, if you if it's the right job for you, if it's the right marriage for you, yeah, you know, this is, these are some people that I've been around. Hello? Oh, if it's right for you, it's peace. You don't have no organ. And that's a lie. God don't tell you nothing about if you get on a job or something like that. It's not going to be a whole lot of discord. But what I am learning with him, with my life, is when the devil straight up attacks like that, I can stand, pray about it, and let him fight my battle. But when he moves me, stay moved. When I go back, that's me that's going back. In that situation, when that dude did that, I shouldn't have went back. And I took it out myself because they kept calling me and texting me and stuff, wanting me to come back after I had already told how the dude had, had, had talked to me. But they called they still covering him, covering it up because they knew he was wrong. So I ended up going back. 
You see what I'm saying? I let them lead me back. God told me to stay away, but I went back on my own, so I get what I deserve. So I'm not mad about it. I'm not mad about it. I just need to um I need to just keep moving and uh asking God to open doors no man can open and close doors no man can close. And uh, I was reading an interesting thing, you know, because I dashed through Facebook on my mother's page. And um, I saw one of there where fast was like, yeah, you know, you going through what you going through because of what you asked for. And I'm like, oh, man. I'm like, mm. yeah, spiritual warfare, you know. Satanic. Man. Because I'm like, man, things happen to make you want to give up. And not only do I do you have to watch and monitor for God's presence, you have to walk. I have to walk and monitor the devil's presence. And like I was talking to you, um, I was talking like I don't know where I found that money. And I gave it back. And then some other incident happened. The glasses thing and the other thing. And I had prayed about it. And you know what God revealed to me? That was the devil teasing. Because he wanted me to get discouraged. <clears throat> it did. It had me discouraged. Somebody, why would you show me this and then you're going to take it? That was the devil. He wanted to do Oh, look. Look, you need this. And look, oh, now you can't have it. Look, God is not doing nothing for you. Look at you. You need this, you need... Well, I, let me take that back. I don't need nothing. I want some things, but I don't need anything. God supplies all my needs right now. Right, 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 right now. Everything is okay. But, uh, you know, I'm a human being. I can't look a little ahead, you know, look ahead on what things need to be taken care of. But, um, yeah, God takes care of me. And uh, uh, when uh, the, the pastor uh, uh, wrote in there about, yeah... You ask for something and these things come about, basically, is that I responded saying a lot of the things that's going on. You know what I'm saying? But even though I said it, the devil was fighting me because I'm trying to text it, you know, because I was in that moment because dude said all that stuff last night. So I'm in the moment of responding and I'm like, yeah, this is wrong and that's wrong and look, this is happening. You know, and, you know, I did that last night, but then today I look at it. Yeah, I have all of that, but what can I do to change it? I, I, I'm complaining about it, and I'm whining about it, but what can I do to change it? You know, what power is God giving me? He, he's in control of everything, but what part do I need to do? You know, and like I said, I listened to that guy, and you no, know, the advice he gave me, no, it wasn't, it wasn't the correct advice. So, I just got to figure out what to do. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm just praying, but, you know, um, I still have the other little job, so, you know, um, I just got to keep on going, you know. Life, life shows up, and if you allow it, it will show out. You know, uh, I'm thinking about uh, all of the young people now that's dying, committing suicide, and people are getting shot every day. It's like every day somebody's getting shot, somebody's getting killed. The guy just took a truck and ran over eight people. And they're showing all this stuff on the news. Somebody's beating kids and children abused. And, I mean, all these things that's going on in the world, you know. And I used to sit back and whine like, darn, I'm getting older, you know what I'm saying. And I wish I did this and I wish I did that. But then when I look back and it's like, you know, me and this other, you know, I was sitting and listening to some people talk, and this guy said something. He said, yeah, you know, thank God that you're young now. You can change your life. But then he said, really, it's not just that now that you're young now. Any age when you can change your life. Because now, 13, what they say, the youngest person that was involved in the shooting, 13, 14-year-old victims involved in shootings and killings. A lot of people are not even living past 25, past 30. So it's a blessing to be, if you're over 50 and you're still breathing, hello, you're blessed. You have an opportunity to do things with your life, to change your life, to change other people's lives. 
Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, uh, wow. When I was talking and I was praying, you know what I'm saying? Well, talking to, I be talking to God, you know what I'm saying? Praying. Oh, uh, God reminded me of, I put it on one of my, uh, it's on one of my, uh, my YouTube video where Dr. Martin Luther King, he called the man, uh, uh, Jesus called the man a fool. And, uh, I was thinking that with this guy when he was talking to me, you know, it's funny, I was speaking to him, I was speaking to this other guy about social activism. And it's funny to me when you're speaking to, when I'm speaking to somebody, someone, they're quick to hurry up and tell you, you need to get a lot of people. You need to go get this person. You need to go get that person. And I appreciate your help. But at the same time, I, I thank God for remembrance. I thank God for a man. I thank God for the past. Because, like I said, even when I was drinking, I always could remember stuff. I can remember a lot of stuff. I could forget some stuff, but I can remember a lot of stuff. And um, God brought to my remembrance, the guy that, that was talking about the social activist, he was telling me, yeah, you need to get this person, this type of person, and do that. And I had to hurry up and correct him. No, I'll do what God tells me to do. And the point I'm making is, People are quick to lead and guide you in what I'm noticing in my life. People are quick to lead and guide you, certain people, when I'm asking them, of course, they're quick to hurry up and guide you away from God. But of the, old, the two people that I spoke to, the one, my first mentor, he did say pray. But at the same time he said pray, he still got a direction he wants me to go to is a little bit away from God. And that trips me out. In that, if I'm talking to you about a problem that I'm having, evidently I've already spoken. Now that ten times I've spoken to other people and they wasn't listening to me. Are they listening? And I, and I was around them and they didn't cooperate. But the first guy I was talking about social, he's the same person that had spoke to me before. And uh. We were talking about uh, we were talking about uh, a person changing, and some people don't change. Some people don't change. It's one particular chick she didn't change. As a matter of fact, I just ran into her last week at a little ladies' meeting at a church. She's over there. She's at that church because she went to another church. She was at a church and the guy was praying and doing, putting his hands on with all the women. They tried to get me to go. Spirit of discernment, spirit of discernment said, don't go. They kept coming to me. I'm like, she, this one chick never did really speak to me. But all of a sudden, she wanted me to all come to the church. Oh, he prayed. He could see in the spirit. And he could tell you this and he could tell you that. And, oh, and they prayed all night. I'm like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. So anyway, that church dismantled, and so she's down at this other church, and now she's telling me that she left a lot of stuff alone, and so now she's moved over to Indiana somewhere. So, like I said, rely on that spirit of discernment. You know, that's that's the people I want to be around. I want to be around. I don't mind being around people that's talking about worldly things, but when it comes to me in distress. And I'm having a lot of problems, and I'm stressing, and I'm struggling, and I'm discouraged. Come to me, please, and talk to me about God's healing power. And tell me some of the stories of victory. How Joshua fought the battle of Jericho. How Moses parted the sea. How God will keep you. He will give you peace. Peace that you can't even understand and you can't even comprehend. How he can take you through battles and storms. And you know, you're not even in a boat. <laughs> you're not even in a boat. You know. And if you have faith, real, 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 real strong faith, you can be like Peter and just start walking out in the water. Those are the people I like talking to. Talk to me about my guy. Talk, that's what I want to hear. Talk to me about my guy. I understand. Yeah, yeah. But because people... Don't always have your agenda. 
So you have to be careful. Just like Joseph when he told his brothers about his dream. They hated him anyway. Jealousy among family. Well, he told them about the dream. I'm not for real, for real. They had plans to kill him. Thank God. They, well, God didn't allow. It wasn't no thank God. God didn't allow. But the whole point of that story is this, and I pray it's my outcome. <laughs> I don't want to be a king, but I'd let it be a queen. Uh, I tell you, at the end, his brothers came to him and asked him for some help. They were starving, and they came to Joseph and asked for some help. And he didn't have any storms anymore. And that's the way I want to be. Just get to the point where those storms are not big like that anymore. Just just walk on and have a good story. Just a good ending. <laughs> just let me go on with the ending. I'm not saying that. Let me just get the victory. Let me just get the victory, get the dream, and just get everything together and just, you know, press down, shaking together, running over. <laughs> yeah. Well, as usual, I'm going to get off here. I have to go to the library to upload this video, and uh, which the library uploads these uh, these videos fast. I love that, so I have to go do that. And uh, like I said, all I do is just keep moving, keep moving. You know, the blessing's not gonna always come to the house. Though I did get some money. <laughs> Talking about I ain't had no food. Turn around, get home. I had dreamed of a package, and uh, God bless me. You know what I'm saying? I got a little check. Yeah, I am. So, if I need some food, you know, God's grace and mercy, I don't have to worry about food. Um, so, I have food. I have my little pop. I have my oatmeal and my pickles and all that little stuff. You know, the things I like to eat. So, I'm blessed and highly favored. Sometimes, like I said, I'm a human being. It's like, I don't spend over here. Save and budget your money. You know, but... When I look back over my life, you know, and I look back over yesterday and the yesterday and the yesterday and the yesterday and the yesterday, God has kept me. He kept me. But the human in me gets scared. And the fear is real. But the God in me is strong and I just have to keep on feeding him. You know the story when they talk about which dog will get bigger. And the point is the dog that you feed. One dog can be good, one dog can be bad. Whichever one you feed, if you keep feeding the, the, the good dog good things, the word of God and putting put feeding that dog, that one is to get bigger. If you keep feeding devilish stuff, disbelief, Distrust, you keep feeding that to the dirty dog or the, <laughs> the bad dog. Yeah, that dog's going to get bigger. So that's why I said, I understand people, and I thank God for them. I do, because they're some powerful people, both of the people. You know, they have their life together. They got their, you know, I'm not going to say totally together, but they live in nice. They got nice vehicles and stuff like that. Not that that makes or break you, but the two people I have spoken to, one of them used to be my teacher. <laughs> but, uh. Both of the people I had spoken to, you know what I'm saying, they have encouraged me. And, you know, the one, I mean, he's very powerful. You know what I'm saying? He encouraged me. He's, he's the one that started me to go back to school being older, you know. And so I thank God for him, you know. And uh, But I understand what they're saying. And I'm going to get, I, I need to not just reach out and pick people. A lot of times, if, if you get what somebody wants, they will come for you. You know, I'll get out there and I say my piece to some people. And some people want to jump on. And then it's like, well, I, wanna, uh, I want you to beg me to be. No, uh-uh. I don't need to beg you to be with me. I don't need to ask you for nothing. Because God will supply all my needs. I don't need that. Because if I, if, if I rely on you to give me something, then I'm a slave to you. Then because I don't know when you're going to come back and want to take something from me. And you feel me, you know. But if it's a mutual thing, yeah, I want to be, I want to be with you. I like what you believe in, you know. How can I help you? How can I be a service? Not just being a service to me. How can I help you fulfill God's plan? Yeah, let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. Yeah, 
You know what I'm saying? They ain't always about encouraging me for that. But hey, let's get this going. Let's get that going. You know what I'm saying? But other than that, you know, God's kept me. The main thing I have to always remember is to call on him. Because I called on man, I'm talking about I got to the point I was like, help me. Talking to the person that was supposed to be. But then I'm like, I have to remember too. Other people are going through things. You know, and I'm not always there for them. So maybe, you know, maybe that's it. Sometimes you ask, I, maybe I ask for help from somebody that was hurting and I had been there for them or they feel I had been there for them. You know, and so that's my wrong. So, God forgive me for that. You know, but I also, most important, you know, I pray for God to change me. You know, anything in me that you see that shouldn't be, take it out. Wash me, cleanse me, purge me, wash me. I don't even want to be whiter than snow. <laughs> Forget white in the snow. I want to be clear. <laughs> I want to be transparent. But anyway, God is good. And sometimes, like I said, I just keep it real and I go through. And like I was telling this guy, I'm like, man, I somebody would have told me I'd be talking, saying this stuff. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have believed it. But like I said, um, Whatever, whatever, you know, whatever, however, but God is good. I pray that everyone has a blessed day today and a blessed weekend. Uh, I pray that all of your dreams come true. Especially the good ones, you know, your real good, good dreams. There's one of the, the dreams that want to help other people. You know, the dreams for you to have your home and have your nice, reliable car, and the dreams for you to have your family taken care of and provided for, and you know, keeping a roof over your head and food and clothes on your back. Uh, I join in that prayer for you. Well, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.